There are a lot of considerations about comparative effectiveness research. Um, one has to do with um, the degree to which you need hard evidence. Um, and, uh, and that means empirical studies. It has a lot to do with who the, uh, the audience is and who you're speaking to and what their needs are um, and what they will accept. So um, clearly if, um, if uh, the issue is to uh, develop evidence for the promotion of a product, for instance, um, you have to satisfy the FDA in order to meet their criteria. If the evidence is um, um, identified as something that you want to um, impress or to uh, impact individual patients, then you have to know what patients care about. Patients care about, um, of course, the, the effectiveness of their product or the, or the, or the, or the therapeutic um, intervention. Um, they care about their quality of life. They care about um, their out-of-pocket expenditures. Um, much of that, the, um, the uh, payer may not care about at all. Um, so it really depends on um, what is required. It also has a lot to do with uh, the economics of, of the study. You're, you're not certainly going to spend more for a study if you don't get some kind of a return. So there has to be some expectation that, um, that, that the investment that you go through winds up with um, increased access or increased uh, sales or, um, or of some sort. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of factors associated with it. It's a very, very tricky situation to answer in, in, a, in a sort of in a single sentence. Up until now, um, the, 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 the research world, um, the regulatory world, the, the, even the public debate world, as it were, um, seems to think that we need to appeal to a scientific standard that is defined by, by statisticians or by analysts um, to, to meet the evidence needs of decision makers.